Hey everybody, welcome back. We are in Lua Basics, coding number 10. We're going to work with some touch today. All right, you're going to get to actually get on the device and touch the device and move characters around uh, according to where you're touching the screen. So it's pretty awesome and it's super easy. So uh, notice I have our setup class there called up with our colors. We've got our background as black and I've got our planet cute character boy set up at, at this particular position at zero and 200. All right, some of the easiest things you can do here, and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, and you come in here, instead of putting zero, you put current touch dot X and current touch dot Y. All right, and we will refresh it, make it go out of there, and notice now as I touch the screen, I'm touching the screen, this little boy moves up and down wherever I am touching the screen. Pretty cool. If he will go back left and right depending on where the touch is. Now if I come here and I get rid of this and I say that his Y is always gonna be static at let's just say half of the height, right? Half of the height there. Now as I move him, I, he will, no matter where I touch the screen, he will just move left and right. Uh, his height will stay the same. Same thing here if I undo that and I come here and I put width times 0.5. We refresh it, bring it back. And now you can't see him because he's in the middle, uh, but he is over there. Let's actually change this to 0.1. And now he will stay consistently there up and down no matter where I move my finger it's on the right side of the screen I'm moving it up and down that is very handy for maybe games that are falling or you're trying to catch specific things uh, you only want them to stay on one side of the screen okay so that is the easiest way to get shapes and things in there is you've got the current touch dot X current touch dot Y all right a couple other things that we can add we'll zoom in here is the the previous x we can print out here uh, the previous x so if i do current touch dot previous x it's going to print out in the output uh, on my previous tap where if i do this i'm moving it down this is my x as i'm tapping across the screen it's doing the previous one as opposed to its current one all right, uh, whereas if I did this, you're not going to see much different. It's, it's going to have my exact one as opposed to the previous X coordinate. Okay, uh, the delta, this is the change in X, whereas we come here, this will print out how fast I'm moving it. Whereas if I move very little, there's very little change in my X. You'll see one kind of go as a consistent, where if I go super fast, to the right whereas back to the left would be negative and the faster i move to the left the bigger the number the faster i move to the right the bigger the number there so that actually tells you how fast i am swiping right and you can imagine if you're wanting to do something specific uh, if you want a character to swipe up and you want them as i swipe up really really fast if i'm moving this character back in here and i move up really really fast something happens to him or if i move really really slow nothing really is happening it's down i'm moving down you can tell i'm moving down because my delta y is negative all right and then the other thing we can do is the state of the touch all right so the way that this works is we do current touch dot state and what this means is i can either have it began where it's starting it's moving or it's ended. So for example, if I tap and hold it, the easiest way to see is when it's moving. If I'm tapping and holding it, it has a state of one, which is moving. Whereas if I stop it and let go, it goes to two, which is ended. That means the actual touch has ended. Whereas if when I start, you can see it, it'll flash a zero in there. And that start state is zero. That's a began. So I began at zero. I'm moving with one and I let go and it's two. Okay, that's the current state of what you're doing. So uh, if you want the button to be pressed or something like that, you tap it and the state would have to be began. Or do you want the button to be released when you let go of the button, that would be ended. 
We'll talk more about that here in just a minute. The other thing is you can print the current.touch tap count. Okay, so boom, and I'm just gonna keep tapping there and it's gonna continually go up and now my count is 30, 35, boom, and it starts over. So depending on how quick, it's about, you know, I'd have to do it fairly quickly here, otherwise it will go away. But this is a good way to tap if you wanna double tap. You know, if your double, if your tap count equals two, then you spit something out. You fire something, or with games especially, that's what you would do there. So let's actually talk about how this is going to work. All right, one of the things we're gonna do here is call the touched function. This is not called by default, so we actually have to put it in here. And that's not a big deal at all because all you do is just put it in there, just like function touched. So it knows that when the device is touched, it, what happens. So it actually will do something here. Let's create a button. How about that? Let's fill it with red and let's put it in the bottom here, bottom left corner. And it's going to go up a hundred and over a hundred. And there it is right there. Okay, let's actually make it be a little bit taller. There we go, cool. So there is our red button. And let's do another button on top of that. Let's fill it and let's make it green. And let's do the same kind of thing. We'll start not down at the bottom left, but a little bit higher. Let's go up, uh, I don't know, 300. And then let's do the same with their 100 and 200. And there's our other button, okay? All right, what we can do now is we want to touch the red button. We can say if current touch dot X and we want to take the first one here as zero. So if it's bigger than zero, if our touch is bigger than zero, and our current touch dot x is less than, well, it went from zero to 100, so it goes, it's gotta be from there. Then we're gonna check and also now check our current dot touch y, and we're gonna make sure that it's bigger than, it started at zero, and our current touch dot y is less than, it went up to 200, right? So it goes from zero to 200, then we will say print I'm touching the red button. All right, make sure we have our end, make sure we have our end there. And now let's run it. And as I touch the red, if I put my finger inside the red button, boom, it says I'm touching the red button. Let's refresh it. I'm touching outside of the red button right now, currently. And once my finger gets into the red button, there it is, pretty awesome, huh? All right, let's do the same thing for the green button. It is actually a little different and I will show you why here in just a second. The biggest thing here with the green button is that it starts at a different position. So it starts at our X at zero, but our Y is 300. So the X still is the same here, that it's in between zero and 100, but the Y is different. The Y starts at 300, so it's gotta be bigger than 300. And the Y has to be less than 200 greater than 300. Think about it, this is 300 right here. It goes 200 higher, so it's gotta be less than 500. So you have to do some math there, but it's not a big deal. Uh, we're touching now the green button. All right, let's refresh there. So red button, green button, red button, green button, red button. Uh, in between there, there's nothing. Outside is there's nothing. Green button, make sure you did your math correctly. Green button, green button, green button. You're good, okay? Uh, now, a couple other things you can do is if your current touch dot tap count equals equals two, then you can print out the fact that you have touched the screen twice. And there, get everything organized. Boom, go back here. All right, so now let's run it. Now I'm gonna double tap the screen and it's gonna print, I've touched the screen twice. Double tap, touch the screen twice, okay? So that's an easy way to do your, your tap count. The other thing is, let's just say you want your button to do something. Well, let's just say it needs to actually be that you let go of the button. So for the red button, we can do the current dot touch dot state if it equals ended rather than began, which is when you first start touching it, or if it's moving. Uh, if it is ended, then you can print start the game because you have actually stopped pushing the red button and you want to be done. Okay, so let's do that. 
and let's run it and we are touching the red button i let go it says start the game all right because it knows i have left my or i've moved my finger off of the red button whereas we'll go down here to the green button let's just say the green button uh it might be oh i don't know like a menu and so it start the menu or options so now i run it i am starting boom start the game let go boom i let go it says start the menu and the options so then therefore it would take you to the menu or the option state there in which we'll learn about states and how to move through progress through a game later on but for the most part that's really all you're doing with the current touches and uh, pretty awesome play around with it you can do some of the swiping whether you want to move fast or slow with a particular character as you're moving them across the screen again that's the delta x or the delta y um, but there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with, with the touch states there so have fun